Hey guys, we're doing a deep dive into the thoughts of Nits. Not like something you would see in a video, but their subreddit. So let's go. What's this five year gap in your resume? Well, I was suffering from severe mental illness and completely recluded from society for five years, huh? Oh, sorry, I meant traveling. Yeah. Oh, my bad, I was self employed. That's probably not gonna work. <clears throat> It's amazing how simply you can take a few months, years off, and uh, I have uh, a financial back backing too. Yeah, I mean, society is really not that kind to uh, not being able to track you and uh, can't have a job gap if you've never had a job. Yeah, I mean, people might say like, oh, yeah, man, they got to get back in line and like, you know, pick yourself back up while making it extremely difficult to do so. I mean, if you stop having like a continuous record of having having a job i mean it might be really tricky to get back right <clears throat> i got a job my first interview saying that <laughs> they might, may have been desperate <laughs> honestly what are you supposed to do in a situation like this you get just screwed if someone who is mentally ready to start working after a few uh, years of mental illness secluding yourself from society you can just be honest with an interviewer you won't get hired anywhere so really what's the answer i'm genuinely curious you're just screwed that's it you're fucked simply put <laughs> see you lie of course yeah it better make it good this hit a nerve don't you're great yeah video game kind of is the escapism of our time and What's going to be when AI takes over, the robots do the jobs, and we're all going to play video games? Are, are we all going to be Jerry's? Because this is going to be it, right? I mean, too many of us, and arguably even right now, we have many, many bullshit jobs. There's like a whole book about it. <laughs> yeah. But your propensity to uh, seek out and enjoy escapism is like directly proportional to how much you're, you need to escape your life, I suppose. You'll get better in the next life. I'll get better in high school. I'll get better in college. I'll get uh, better in uh, get better get better in university. You'll get better when I have a job. Yeah, the thing is, like many played that that route that was laid laid out for them, and realized that you know you did everything right, and the the gold pot, the the reward at the end of the journey was something that. They would rather not have at all. I can put it darker, and so I've decided to check out. But maybe that's not the best way to say it. Hopium and copium, you gotta be high on both. <laughs> yeah. People like hope, but like, it's, yeah, hope is cope. I mean, you should not be hoping that things get better on their own. And arguably, people are kind of working against you, usually, for their interest. You get better once I'm dead. Why does Walmart have nebulizer mask next to the helium mask? Uh, thanks. Mm. Okay, so the needs are not kind of not that hopeful, but people, everyone, just hoping that things get better uh, for no reason, or that what they do is just gonna work out for some reason, even though they have no reason to really believe that. Aside from like maybe some some factors, like oh yeah, it's gonna work out for some, but like it really doesn't stop them from like playing the lottery or something. This really speaks to the darkness of this Reddit. Yeah. In this world, you're supposed to be the one who obeys or disappears. And I guess the needs are taking the third option. Well, not right away, but what we see here, but still kind of third option nonetheless, which is unacceptable unless you're rich. In which case, like, yeah, it's just great. All of my plans for the future involve me waking up tomorrow with a sudden sense of discipline and adherence to a routine that I've never displayed once in my life. Yeah, this is just delusion. People like to imagine that they have more freedom than, than they have, especially about themselves. Yeah. If you cannot make the free, if you're not free to make a choice right now and commit to it, why do you think that you'll be free to make it later? Especially like, oh yeah, that's the kind of hoping that you're going to get younger later, something like that. It's, it's very delusional. It's not going to get easier. Same thing, same same team. Lazy, unemployed, degenerate piece of Vibo, shit, and model citizen. Yeah. So, kind of hoping. Sent Confuse, relieves of H, Mac VG, pain after 12 hour shift. <laughs> yeah. What did Mark say? That religion is the copium of the masses? 
Yeah. And what we'll have in a world where there is no religion, right? And and you see, you see the information out there, and you, you know where it leads. Hmm? What do you play? My dream job is not working. No work. I don't dream about labor. I think there's got to be a distinction between labor, or like a job, and work. I mean, are there things that you like to put in effort that others might find valuable? That's a good question, because you almost certainly do. There's got to be something that you put in effort that others find possibly useful. Although this might be not hard work or whatever, it might be. It really depends. But there would be very few people who would just want to do no work at all. I mean, the people, what people really have a problem with is jobs. And you can read a book about it. It's private government. It's probably going to piss you off. <laughs> Unless you're into that. Okay, only solution. Me time traveling. Just do it, man. It doesn't get better. I fucking knew it. <laughs> Alright, let's go. You hit close to home, OP. I feel personally attacked. Okay, what we have here. I remember at 15 feeling very depressed, not trying to be edgy, but I figured out a lot of things then. Yeah, they just call you a pessimist. I, I hate that. Yeah, I, I remember feeling like that. That when I was young, I, I, I may have been labeled a cynic and a pessimist, but I just, I just used my own two eyeballs. So, does that make you a, a pessimist? I would go back to myself at 15 to tell him the truth in the form of three page guides so that the time he doesn't mess up. In this guide, I would tell him about how he can improve, but also the truth. It's up to him. <laughs> so completely shredding responsibility. Wow. I go back the day after my mother's funeral. Ugh. Okay. Are you okay? I guess not. Now, this is a good one. Me judging my family's poor financial decisions while also being a need with no backup plan. Boy, everyone's stupid except me. That's actually a very good uh, point. That people like to think others are stupid, who are making possibly bad choices, but, I mean, are you making superior choices? I mean, just not making, just not acting, that doesn't mean that it's good. I mean, someone like, oh yeah, I'll do nothing, so I didn't fuck up. Or, I didn't make a choice, so I didn't fuck up. And like, oftentimes not making a choice is the worst choice. At least you could have done something that may have led to something, or something better, right? So, not making a choice, not the best. <laughs> Although some, some, even make it worse than that. <laughs> Day job of Van Gogh. I mean, this is actually an excellent point. And people are like, oh yeah, man, people are just gonna be lazy. You're like, no. If 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 we had a system where people weren't like dominated into being lower class or basically being a a, a wage slave, then most of those people probably gotta do well enjoy a more of a work-life balance maybe they wouldn't work initially or they at least wouldn't have a bullshit job but probably they gonna do something more useful eventually employees a snack will be provided for you today at the food court in appreciation to your hard work today snack a banana <laughs> monkey business uh, whether you choose to eat or not, uh, don't forget to leave a thank you note, or else it will be deducted from your pay. This can't be real. <laughs> it's totally it's totally real. Return the monkey. <laughs> so, kind of a, a disappointment in uh, normal life, I suppose. I mean, you could be the... If... Well, who's who's having the best, best life? Uh, assuming that you're lower class. I mean, if you're religious and you just love people, then it, it might be okay for you. Otherwise, it might be... Uh, rough she sits in her room all day playing video games nikki chan i would love to have a boyfriend but my video games are more important <laughs> i heard that line before i guess i won't be earning money work how to make money the thing is it really should not be tied to wage labor and the reason people are so uh depressed and disappointed and hopeless because they are kind of like forced into wage labor i guess because even when Adam Smith was uh, writing his bestseller, he was mostly thinking about people working for themselves instead of uh, be being enslaved, essentially. So um, my point is, like, if you make money in a way that you have more freedom and agency, uh, you're going to enjoy that more. The reality of life as a need. Being unemployed and having a job. So, oh, hmm, yeah. So, I mean, people care about your mental health, except 
accept if society itself the system itself is causing your mental health problems it's like oh yeah you care about my mental health give me money it's like no i don't think so but i will tell you to uh like it more for some money solve the eighth problem tomorrow just wake up wear your formal clothes go to any company and start working if they call the police go to the police station and start working there too you're tired of sending cvs uh, that's just uh an air of powerlessness i mean this is clearly understandable especially in this in this time that ai is kind of taking the jobs you could just be sending the cv i, I saw like uh some news like I mean, like last week or so that the average american worker is is taking over one year to, to get a job which is ridiculous which they can lose at that point i would argue that jobs are completely broken even before like if it takes like a few months to get a job and like it's really unlikely that you get fired it's not that bad i guess and it works but like if it takes over one year and you can just get fired like that then what are we talking about and also like you might need like a long history of being the best worker or just even get uh considered among at least three or four digits amount uh, of applicants pretty much needs is it okay if i just exist for a while without being a slave to capitalism yeah these guys are not working either <laughs> and in a good world people losing their jobs would be something we should celebrate like imagine if like uh you're in you were a cashier and some checkout robot came to take your job and you just went home and like good job you're retired awesome for you some robots come in and take your job not a problem you love it and uh yeah we don't have that people that the robots and the ai coming to take our jobs is basically an existential threat I was not consulted about my birth. I did not consent to this. Now I'm stuck in a contract. I didn't even sign. Yeah, life is most a lot. People don't like to say this, but if you were born in Africa, it, well, you would likely still be there and like collecting plastic bottles or something. So that's it. And we don't care about people. We, we just want to use them, right? I want to live to reach 20, <clears throat> but since I'm older, then that now I feel a bit lost. I don't have what you might call a dream. I don't even know where I'll be one year from now. I don't care what happens to me. I don't seem to be able to have dreams, plans. It's good enough just to be alive. My goal is to be positive and joyful. Yeah. But this is kind of a reflection of society. But she clearly doesn't want to die, right? It's it's really hard to hope for things if you're living under hopeless circumstances. And you might say that that is not the case for you, but I'm emphasizing the for you part. Uh, she in this picture is living uh, in one of those... Uh, uh, it's a Japanese thing. Basically like a net cafe where you can stay there for like 10 bucks uh, a day, something like that. Uh, that's where the homeless go, so they are not technically home. Well, they're they're homeless, but like at least they're not sleeping in the streets, I guess. Me and boys at the job center trying to believe that there is still hope to find a suitable job with acceptable working conditions. That's actually a very good point. That people might think that needs are needs because I don't know some personal choice, a personal failing. They might not be the case because like there's like the lost generation even in Japan. I mean. Like they didn't get the job and the, and because of that they like may have missed out on like two or three years of employment but guess what if you miss out on that then like why should they hire get those guys like oh my god this guy done, did nothing so they are basically just done because like the economy was bad then it's like okay gg even though they did everything right uh, possibly just made this out of boredom. Finding uh, jobs in it can be quite exhausting. Literally no job experience, years of need them, no skill whatsoever. Give me a job, please. Hmm. It's actually interesting because it's kind of reflect their mindset that, I mean, if they had a chance and okay, working conditions, I, I would argue, because they are kind of critical of that, then they probably would get back in line, I guess. So even though they might be critiquing uh, society, if society wasn't as big of a dick, 
then you wouldn't have this problem. I exist to provide labor to my employer. In return, I receive just enough money to provide for basic shelter, food, and transportation so I can return the next day and labor for my employer again. I will do this day after day and be thankful for the privilege. I will do this week after week, month after month, and year after year until my health and body can no longer provide value to my employer. Then I will die. Brutal wage pill. This is depressing. Wage your life. And if you're a man, you also get to do it without any wife or children to come home to? Hmm. It's either living with your parents or a studio apartment, but <laughs> you do it up yourself. <laughs> oh my god. Hmm. Yeah. It's interesting because, like, I mean, one of the main critiques against communism was that, I mean, people didn't have the, the drive to do more somehow. But if this is the game of capitalism, then the, the people just check out. I mean, people just gonna make more money, right? Or else there's just no hope, right? Get a job, Moocher. We'll do whatever we can to protect your life. You're on your own. Get a job, Moocher. Help. Your tramp mom doesn't want food stamps to feed you or medical insurance. <laughs> I mean, the only reason people like, well, those who are employers, kind of owners, kind of like the immigrants too, because like they come in and, uh, I'm not, not critiquing immigrants here, because, like, not, not that. Just, they, they, for the employers, it's really good, because, like, they drive up real estate, and uh, they drive down uh, the wage. So, that's pretty good. But, of course, that's not the main problem. Mm. I've come to the conclusion that the sole purpose of homework is to condition children into accepting that unpaid overtime and ridiculous hours and not even being able to escape work, even in your own home, are normal things to expect in their future. I would argue that we might even, we, we should even teach the kids more. So I'm definitely on board with like, learn more like crazy. But if you're talking about school here, especially like not good school, it's basically like just a uh, a painted indoctrination center. I mean, you might learn more, but the whole point is obedience, right? They, they gotta teach you to be obedient. And I know some people who are like self-taught and the the difference between agency, between someone self-taught or maybe like some alternative education, like the Montessori something, something, and someone who like received schooling and possibly wasn't as active, uh, alongside school i mean if they are like if they have the culture that you gotta like hustle alongside it maybe maybe not so much but if they just they showed up for school then uh they could be seriously lacking some agency the dream and experience no sir i hope you will gain some here you're hired yeah that's not how the world works even if you have like a college degree like yeah it's gonna be rough 85 autistic unemployment rate make basic a Accommodations for autistic people complain that you can't find employees, businesses. The thing is, this is not just businesses, but, but everyone. They may put a, a, a nice face, they pretend to care, but deep down, it's like, you know, what yours you are to me. That's pretty much it. I mean, they might like you. I'm not, not, I'm not aiming to paint this in a very negative light, but, I mean, businesses are basically sociopaths or arguably psychopaths. They just care about, they're basically buying you. And they don't care about anything else. If they would totally hire someone autistic, assuming their autistic traits don't really get in the way, and they, they just get the job done. They, they get the job done best, then it doesn't matter, right? But if it gets in the way of doing the job, then yeah, it's gonna be rough. This is what they mean when they say they're creating new jobs. I don't think we should create new jobs. And this might be uh, a heresy to say in capitalism, but we should be eliminating jobs as much as possible. We should be like getting work done. I mean, what's the point of creating a job? It's pointless. Like, yeah, we should be getting the, the work done. And if there's not enough work to be done, then we should be uh, distributing the, the, the work we have to do. Because like even before, like, you know, hundreds of years, at least a hundred years ago, it's like, oh yeah, like, okay, the, the weekly job, some person has to do is gonna go from like i don't know like 40 hours to like 12 or something like that i'm not gonna look it up right now and we're not doing that right we're creating jobs right no no matter how pointless real shit living as an eat i've forgotten what the real world is 
like maybe i should get out there maybe i should get a job get some experience living as retail working making min wage i think that i should go back to sleeping in my childhood bedroom and jerking off to any amigos <laughs> yeah people need hope right if these are your two options i mean i'm not even saying that this sucks i'm not even saying that this sucks i think it sucks for some people for sure i mean if you put a hardcore introvert into this role they're gonna be like yeah uh, that looks real sexy. That rope looks real sexy right now, and uh, but even even they should be compensated in a way that they have hope. Because like, imagine if like nothing changed in this world, but like it was easier to get jobs, and like they, they paid like five x or ten x. Like, would that would that not be better? I'm not I'm not saying that this is realistic. I'm just saying that I mean that certainly would pe make people more positive and optimistic and you know, just hopeful just work twice as hard bro you'll be a successful <laughs> you'll be successful in no time and become a billionaire just just like me yeah uh i mean you gotta be realistic right i mean i i do think that you should try to work ideally for yourself if you can but the people who are telling you that you can just do anything are just hope grifting you and especially the boss will tell you that oh yeah work harder uh yeah i mean you have to consider where their interest lies even if it's not strictly benefiting them they could be just uh trying to gain favor with you or uh <laughs> or maybe just trolling you type f in chat for the veggies godspeed veggies godspeed We'll never own a home, we'll never have a good wife, we'll never be independent or free, we'll never have a family, we'll never accomplish anything of note. Zero hours per week <laughs> destroys the system that hates him. <laughs> we'll never own a home, we'll never have a good wife. Same thing, right? And, okay. The thing is, the society gives you status for, uh, for this. This is exactly why young men are opting out. If uh, working uh, five uh, five out of seven days of your life uh, gives you similar quality of life as not working, then why work? The stress of being uh, your manager's bitch, getting shit on by your coworkers or customers isn't worth it. I mean, ideally, there should be like alternative uh, ways of making money other than wage labor, right? And if the job doesn't need to be done, then it, the, the job should be just eliminated. We really should not live in a world where uh, people, people fear uh, jobs getting eliminated. Okay. I'm from India. I actually have a home under my mother's name, which I'll inherit, although I don't know what's the procedure to do so, other than that I'm actually trying to find jobs. Yeah. I think yes. Yeah. I mean, arguably, if you are a job seeker right now, Aren't you neat in a way? You're not in job. You're, are you educating yourself? You might be educating yourself on your own, but that doesn't mean anything. You're not in technically education. That might not be respected. So good job. If you don't have a job right now, then you're neat. I mean, even though making whatever you're doing, you don't have a job, it's not going to be respected. Ultimately, only money is respected. Uh, neat in real life. Oh, well, I was... Once called a genius, now I'm unemployed. My theory is that, I mean, everyone just gets called that, right? I was called that, although I was called a dumb idiot too, so who knows? Am I a genius? I don't think so. Eh. I think people just like to think that, because if you see a, a poll on Reddit, apparently everyone has like 160 IQ. That's the average, and maybe some people has like 140 or something, but everyone is like super genius. Right? Everyone likes to think that they are super smart. And uh, that might not be a reality. And the thing is, I, I, I've seen this, that some people are actually kind of smart. And they see through the system, in a way. that People see only see to their nose. But if you see all the way, like, let's say you read a craft of books, and, and like, yeah, you, you see what's up. And you might have, like, hope of, like, oh, yeah, man, I'm going to get rich or something. You, you don't even have religion to fall back on no religion nothing no cope at whatsoever all your only hope is that you get rich right but you know most don't it's just a it's just a, a dream that people are 
it's kind of like winning the lottery, I guess, for the regular guys. I mean, it happens to some. I mean, I saw a video of some guy who was like, did a startup and they they didn't have any success for like many years, but then it worked out and he got rich. But most startups don't, don't really work out. So that guy just got super lucky. That's it. That He's, he's called the flame and he's, he's, his, his entire value in life that he got lucky, right? He played the lottery. He, he played it with a binoculars with some, I don't know. Oh yeah, telescope. He played it with the telescope and just kept his eye on the price, even though it was just uh, kind of deluded. And it worked out, right? It worked out. And now he's keep telling everyone that, oh my God, I, it worked for me. You should do it too. That's complete survivorship bias, right? Even though it could work out, I'm, I'm not saying that it can't. It, it could be a good idea. I'm just saying that it might not be a good idea for him to really promote that. <clears throat> and if suppose you are kind of rejecting that, like maybe maybe I won't get lucky. Then what kind of life you're predicting for yourself? To all those people who feel bad for not working, humans are not supposed to work. There's nothing wrong with you. I mean, this sounds like a justification, but le let's go. But I don't think it is. No other animal in the world works as a slave. There's no slave masters and slave distinction among uh, amongst groups of animals living together. If there are no other civilization before our known historical bounds, then the humans living 100,000 years ago are completely different to the people today and most likely living like there is much more close to normal than the gangsterism we have today. I mean, we always had dominance hierarchies, I guess, but people were like more likely to use the backup argument uh, in unfair cir circumstances. And people are just completely giving up helpless now. And they're just like hoping that things get better. And uh, I don't know. I, but you better hope that your vote counts. But Mark Twain said that if voting changed anything, then they wouldn't let us do it. So your choice. If any... People say that it was much harder then than all that running about just to survive nonsense. That is what you have now. And thus, you have so many miserable people. I'm not going to go back 100,000 years. I, I've, I've seen that. I mean, that suppose you have like a farm, right? I, I, I've seen this personally. People like live on a farm, kind of kind of like a farm. It's kind of like a, like a house plus like a, a some field behind it. And essentially, they're just set for life. And how much they're working? Like hundreds of hours at most per year. And that's it. They're just completely set. Yeah. All, well, no doubt. It, it might be it might sound privileged in in current time that having a house and a field behind that. But that's pretty much what the life the serfs had, right? And that's kind of what the serfs did. And I saw like a, a video that apparently that the serfs had better lives than us. Because they just like did like, oh yeah, like like spread the seeds of like you know maybe like like you know sprinkle some water on it sometimes and like you know then when like the the food comes up like just like take it take it and like put it in my I uh granary or something or like I said give, give something to the lord or something because like I was gonna punch me in the face and that that's it and like uh don't forget to fuck the wife right and that's it and that was enough or like oh yeah we're gonna work like uh 12 hour days or something Okay, even if we did accept that the necessity of some work, we work way too much. Yeah, yeah that's true. And so, I mean, not necessarily we should like eliminate jobs or we should eliminate the amount we work, right? I mean, that would make so much more sense, right? I mean, if I just like, you know, your your monthly work hours were like 10 hours, right? That's just crazy, right? It's like, oh, yeah, let's go. If we took half the economic gains we made since uh, 1950 and translated them into lower working hours, we worked 20 three hours and still have 43k GDP per capita. Yeah. The wage slave system does benefit the sociopathic and extroverted types. They basically need people to survive, but I mean, it benefits the owners, whoever owns, because like, like that's nothing. Like, like you could just own a field. And, like people just pay you for no reason because they're like some guy who, who was like your dad, maybe like called dibs on, not, not even them, but their dad, their dad, dad. I mean, just someone called dibs on dirt. That's it. And then, not there to your sleep forever. Not a great system.
you can get a four year degree and still be a neat. I got a shitty degree, a shitty bachelor's in chemistry. And that is so general that it hardly prepares you for the outside world. I have not gotten work in the nine months since I graduated. And the most I have done since that is volunteer. Right. I mean, this is not crazy. Like, as I said, like it takes like 12, 12 months to get a job. And uh, many degrees are not that useful, especially if you're not getting it from top colleges, because when people might not be respecting the colleges. But of course, if you learn on your own, then uh, you're also kind of screwed. So I don't know. I mean, it still might count for something, but I don't think you should go to college for the information. In the information age, that really doesn't make sense. You should go just to get the paper. And you're getting the paper to maybe get a, a chance to get in the door, to, to get a job. That's it. Most HR pricks would consider me unemployable with a gap. <laughs> Not you, the buyer, I mean, that's an excellent point, right? I mean, basically, this guy was on need for four years, right? I mean, if if he puts the four year degree down, then like, oh, that's even worse because like, probably he has a big head, right? Now he wants to make more money. Like, think he's like better than us or something like that. So that's gonna hurt him for everything but chemistry. Maybe maybe in some niche niche cases might help. But this just only hurts with chemistry. So, yeah. Otherwise, he's just like, did nothing for four years. I'm practically fucking retired at 24. I have no professional network, so nobody can slip me into the company either. Yeah. I kind of hate that. That it becomes all about networking. Just like, oh yeah, I know a guy. That's it. That's it. Screw, screw, screw knowledge. It's all about being rich and knowing a guy. I cannot afford to move. To a town to find an actual chemistry position, or well, you should be applying remotely, right? Well, you apply the position and, like, you know, you, you, you get a job and then move. The best I can do is retail at this point, uh, and I'm applying to grocery stores and waiting. Yeah, I hate that I fucked up my life. I feel robbed that my STEM degree is worthless. Mm. It's, it's not psychology, right? Dude, I got two bachelor degrees in <laughs> stock exchange, business administration. Oh, um, yeah. A master's degree in finance. Apparently, business is completely useless. Unless you're getting it from a top college. <clears throat> a shit ton of other qualifications. More than seven years of experience since I was laid off some years ago. I can't land a job. Yeah. That's an actually excellent perspective here. That they are trying, right? What else do we have? I have a worthless history degree that took 10 years to get. <laughs> oh, my God. Big shocker that I'm neat low. Yeah. That's, that's a very interesting perspective that your college degree will make you a neat if it's if, if it doesn't get you a job. It either gets you a job or makes you a neat. Um, I guess you just gotta gamble. Best I can do is retail. Yeah, yeah. Honestly, you're better off doing dope under the bridge. I got my first real job at 25. I know many people who didn't start working until they were 27. As long as you're in 20s, there's still hope. Ugh. That's not great for anyone young, uh, older. Welcome to the club. I'm chronically depressed and have useless psychology degree. <laughs> oh my god, called it! The irony, am I right? Yeah, I'm gonna let go roast psychology here. But the, the problem with psychology that people have real problems, right? That is causing psychological damage on them. I mean, if we fix those problems, the damage would go away. And sure, there are some people who have other problems for which psychology might be relevant for. But, I mean... You can't really fix the a starving man's problem by like feel better about it, right? Lo, you think you, that's fucked? Oh my god, this guy, this guy's gonna one up. In my country, a lot of people with master's degrees can get jobs. Yeah, that's just like, you know how little that narrows it down. They end up working in low-paying jobs like food delivery to make ends meet, and it actually devalues the degrees as companies can now ask a college degree for shitty basic job. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> As, uh, there are so many applicants. I wish everyone focused on skills instead of degrees. That's a good point. I would say... Okay. Don't take advice from me, I guess. But don't even focus on skills. I kind of regret that. That I focused on skills more. I, I, Yeah. I don't think this is a bad advice, necessarily. But I think you should focus more on results. Right? You can focus on skills and you might just waste years getting skills that are actually not relevant. It kind of like a degree, but it's actually you don't even have a degree to say like, oh yeah, I got this paper to show that I'm I like, maybe like, okay. No, it doesn't, 
it doesn't show anything. So, the skills can be relevant if no one needs to approve it, right? If you want to work on some skills that benefits you, that's fine. But I think you should just work on results and uh, let the skills come, right? Just lie in your resume. People like you piss me off. I wish I had a degree like that. You have an impressive degree and yet you give up because of your loser mentality. Mm. I lied in my resume it works. If I was you, I would just lie as well. But like, what would he lie though? Okay. I guess he can lie that he already had a job. You just need an extensive plan and think about what questions they would ask. Prepare to explain everything in every detail. Same story. Yeah. Say that you travel to Africa to experience life in a natural... That's fucking useless. This guy is just... This guy doesn't know anything. You, you think that uh, the, the job... Uh, the, your employer will care that you went to Africa? Say that you started your own business and but failed? Yeah. I'm not sure even this is super respected. Say that you sailed around the past... No. No, this is garbage. I I'm telling you. This, that this is not gonna work. I mean, maybe, maybe this, if you can spin it well. But I doubt it. Also, moving to a different continent will often make you more interesting. I'm not so sure about this. I don't know. The, I don't think the needs are the best advice when it comes to getting jobs. I mean, sure. I mean, he's this. He's not wrong. You you should you should get creative. Not not saying lie, but like you need to present well. That's kind of what I'm saying. If, if you can. Thought you guys may appreciate this. Society pushes us since our uh, childhood to be in a chronic state of fight or flight, rush to school, compete for good grades, compete in sports, achieve, perform. Our nervous system needs stillness, quiet, play, and creativity. We're human, not machines. A <laughs> thing is, at the top, no one wants to compete. No one wants to compete at all. Everyone wants to be a monopoly. The basically god like no one can compete with me competition is for the chum that's it i mean you can compete i'm not, not saying that you can't compete but compete is not just all there is a a cooperation and a competition spectrum and generally speaking cooperation is king but competition might give you more hmm so just to circle back to this, I mean, imagine like unions, right? If the all the workers unite, this is a pretty uh, salient example, then they get they push up their wage, right? In the the employer's interest is that they all compete super hard with themselves, with others. It's just all chum, right? They fight with each other. They can distract it. But imagine if everyone united, right? That's it. <laughs> and it works. It works, you see it over and over and over again. They push up their salaries like to multiple X, right? Fuck ambitions. I want to move to a house in a mountain and play video games until I die. I don't want anything from this life. I almost 30 and my balls are really burnt at this point. I don't want a girlfriend or friends. I want I don't want a car, only a bike. I don't want to live in a city which is full of noises and zombies. <laughs> okay. I don't want dreams anymore. I only want to be left alone. In my video games until I die. I also love beat Fox existence, humanity and society. I never ask for this, please leave me alone. But the thing is, like, this is like radical because like everyone is kind of conditioned to live a certain way. And if you're not living like that, then you're kind of guilted and like, oh yeah, you're you're wrong, right? Even though if you look at the rich boys, right, those with means, you look at the upper class and the elites, what kind of life they are living. Way more degenerate than the needs. Way, way, way more. Paying for education just so you can get a job to pay your loans and bills. Uh, your 9 to 5 jobs makes you miserable and barely uh, sustains the cost of living. Yeah. I, I knew... Well, I mean, maybe I knew more, but like I knew, knew a guy who really offed himself here, over here. Yeah. I mean, he basically had the dream life that society is kind of promoting. And... It did not like it. Developing unhealthy coping mechanisms and distractions from the terrors of life that cost even more money. Yeah. I mean, basically, the dream over time is to 
Escape normal life. Realizing your 9 to 5 job actually makes you a slave to capitalism and wage inequality. Realizing that your life has no actual meaning and that you're just going to work till you eventually die of illness or old age or what. Like having children to pass on the gift of life. <laughs> yeah, that's kind of messed up. I, I could respect parents who try to be more creative. But like the parents who just like, oh yeah, like get a minimum wage job and like something like that. I mean, at least you gotta prepare your kids with like open eyes, something like that. Andrew Yang admits that video games are more intellectually stimulating than working a food service job. Imagine a 21 year old college dropout who is not excited to make sandwiches, Jimmy John's, and prefers his gaming community. Yeah, a lot of. How would I say this carefully? I mean, there are. A lot of agents in this world who are very invested in uh, trying to accept the status quo. Let's go with that. You could say to him, hey, this is Jimmy John's uh, job could could go places. Sure, you make eight, and eight bucks an hour, but maybe if you stick with it for a few years, you could become a manager. Eventually, you could make 35,000 so, <laughs> or so if you really excel, you're willing to work long and hard hours, including waking up at 5 a.m. To slice up tomatoes and cucumbers every morning and commit to it. <laughs> the above is possibly true. But the retail district around Jimmy John's could shrink and the management job might never open up. Or Jimmy John's could bring in an automated system that get rid of cashiers and front of house staff two years from now. Or this manager could just choose someone else. Yeah. Jimmy doesn't know that they tell that to everyone. I can't really say that the food service job is more like more intellectually stimulating or so show than playing video games. Yeah. I mean, thing is, people might say that, oh yeah, TikTok rots your brain. <clears throat> you know what really rots your brain? I mean, sure, TikTok too. <clears throat> but most jobs that don't intellectually stimulate you. <sighs> and that is going to greatly affect you. Imagine if you work a job like that and you're going to lose Three points of IQ for every year you work there. Well, maybe like, let's say five. And you can see this. You can see this, that they didn't start out dumb in some cases, but they have become dumb by doing something that's it's just completely stupid. <clears throat> the main virtues seem to be that, I mean, I, I guess we should not be necessarily talking about IQ, but like, their knowledge is just irrelevant. Imagine if it's just something worked the factory line and they just did this or something, whatever. You know, just same movement, whatever. And imagine, like, what are they learning, right? It's pointless. <clears throat> just, just that for eight hours or, well, 40 hours every week, maybe more. The main virtues seem to be that it pays money, imposes discipline, involves is that a good thing people like to praise discipline i think discipline is bullshit especially when others apply it to you screw that I, i'll discipline you how about that <laughs> you like that i don't think so i'm sure it's discipline in the sense that you you do what you want but like should you be disciplining yourself because that kind of implies that you don't want to do it so like people are just like beat their chest about like discipline yeah the discipline is so good and I'm not necessarily like throwing you under the bus, but like others implying, uh, imposing discipline on you, not fan. You kind of imposing discipline on yourself. That that's gotta be like a plan B at least, because like you should be like you know you should be like you should like what you want to do, I guess. Somewhat. Because if you're doing something, like suppose you are imposing discipline on yourself because you're kind of forced to do something. You're still kind of forced. In a way, they are just applying discipline on you. Still. It, it, it's kind of worse. It's almost worse. Imagine if you were the slave, but also you whip yourself. That's kind of what discipline is. Anyway. <clears throat> I sympathize with this kid, in part because I feel like the trade-offs are more difficult than most people realize. I'm so so in. Like Whoever the make, makes the most money should be working the minimum wage jobs. Let's go with that. If I was given the choice between that and low-end job for months, 
what end or hanging with my friends playing video games i would be very <laughs> it would be very easy to choose the latter the consequences are somewhat vague and down the road yeah i mean they're immediately bad men imagine themselves to be kings warriors ceos athletes ladies men geniuses soldiers workers achievers and part of the band of brothers all these things are possible online yeah and should be possible i think it's like if reality didn't suck as much yeah of course i believe that people should go out into the real world get a job fall in love i still fuck work <laughs> anyway yeah i mean yang seemed like an okay candidate among the candidates because like america has two options well america has one option the business party in two colors uh the blue color and the red color uh one is uh center right and the one is uh far right essentially if you look at the political compass i guess the center right one is probably better probably better but on a global scale uh yeah they're both both on the right and by a lot <clears throat> No shit, have you played Nier Automata? Okay, I kinda like books though. Uh, uh, yeah, sure. Rugged individualism for the poor socialism. <laughs> socialism for the rich, CEOs during the economic. My profits, CEOs during the recession, are losses. Yeah, people are just selfish, that's it. Alright? They do it because they can. That's it. And you can do what you can, which won't be much. Alright? I mean, it means, well, I just saw a video that basically the guy said that the rich get richer and the poor do what they can. That's it. Horrible, awful people who have jobs are more respected than people who are kind and sensitive, but unemployed. Has anyone else noticed this? Right now, I'm going through a bad physical uh, health issue, but which put my job career exploration on hold and I'm being treated like a massive burden. Yeah. My whole life, I've tried to be good. I got straight A's, never got in trouble, being respectful of others, etc. But now I feel like a punching bag. Yeah. If someone has a job that actively causes harm, like working for a company that pollutes the earth or whatever, that's okay, apparently, because they're employed. And not just that. It's all up to, like, their, their ranking on the dominance hierarchy. It would be a little bit naive to think that is directly proportional to the value they bring in or their merit, which is just not. I mean, you can be the king, the most useless, idiotic king or whatever. You're just like, you're the stupidest hat, whatever. You're the, 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 the top dog. That's it. That's how it works. Right? And so like, oh yeah, we don't have kings anymore. We kind of do. We just have more of them. They're called the rich. <clears throat> they might even have a job that doesn't cause harm, but if they are cruel outside of it, it's okay, apparently, because they are employed. Yeah, people kind of have a, like this weird uh, thing with employment, even though it, you could be making good money, right? And people are like, you don't have a job? Well, then they don't respect you, right? It doesn't matter. I mean, if if you don't have a job, then like, okay, like how are you making the money, right? That's that's the follow-up question, right? Children are valued for who they are. Adults are only valued for what they provide. All right? This goes like 10x if you're a guy. It's true, I've mentioned it a lot. You can get away with doing stuff that is bad for people as long as it's legal and makes money. It's not just that. Like, what, what the other is going to do about it, right? I'm being treated for physical, chronic conditions. My only close friend goes to me after I told her about my recent physical conditions. <laughs> I won't tell my situation to my friends, relatives for this reason. Oh, yeah, that's smart. Right. That's pretty damn smart. Because then people are like, well, what use you are to me? Something like that. I mean, this is kind of grim, right? But I'm not saying that this is the case for all, but it could be the case for some. And you might say like, oh yeah, the real friends stick with me, but you might not have any one at the end of it. My whole life, I've tried to be good. Hmm, that's your problem. <laughs> yeah. The thing is, we cannot teach people not how we are, right? We, we teach them to turn the other cheek and we just we just love to punch, right? We just love to punch and take. And we not teach them how the world is and how, how people are. 
because they, perhaps that's not how people like see themselves, but also most of all because they are groomed for exploitation and nothing else. Rage build. They make billions, fuck underage girls, murder people with impunity, and then have their media stooges gaslight you. Meanwhile, wages have been stagnant, stagnant for decades, and you're lucky if you have a stable job that pays enough to live off. The system is bullshit. Fuck. This is why power wins, no mercy. There's no like, oh, might makes right. Forget that. There's no right at all. Just power wins. Is capitalism the ultimate cuckoldry? <laughs> I cannot think or comprehend of anything more cuckold than capitalism. Not a fan of capitalism. I mean, I can understand that. I mean, capitalism works better when you are early in the game, right? You might say like, oh, this game is good. But like, when you're later in the game, this game sucks, right? And people just start losing. It's not a good game. <clears throat> Honestly, think about it rationally. You are manufacturing, packaging, uh, advertising, and selling a product or service for your whole life for a company solely so it can go and its profit get taken by another band. <laughs> Yeah, they're not liking uh, people stealing their profits, kind of capitalism, kind of cringe, not gonna lie. It's not just capitalism, though. I mean, if you lived, I mean, this has got to be a big pill. I'm not sure capitalism is the best, but thing is, it's the people, right? I mean, if people made big money in capitalism and like, it's like, oh yeah, you know, I've done most money, I'm going to give it away, right? No one does that. Now, if they start with advantages, they're going to keep it all and they probably going to rationalize it, right? I was gonna be like, oh yeah, I'm I'm born a billionaire, but like, you know, those poor Africans don't have the money, so I'm just gonna give it to them. No, it's like you build a fucking castle, or a palace, or whatever, right? And you not only spend the money to keep yourself up, but keep others down. That's the important part. We're gonna get Yang in there. Oh, they're Yang lovers, okay. I'm a female, neat from Seoul, South Korea. This is actually interesting because like people might think like, oh yeah, the neat are like to do nothing, but like I. It's been seven months since I got laid off, and seriously, I'm turning into neat. I've been, I've applied to many corporations and government institutions, but they somehow all turn me down for unknown reasons. Yeah, they don't tell you. You have to compete just to get some minimum wage part-time job here. The competition is really severe. Don't know how I even got the job in the first place before getting laid off. I went to the interview for some six months ago. At a Six month job at a government agency for two months ago, and there were 28 applicants already. That that's just the people who were invited for the interview. Imagine how many got rejected. I don't know anymore. The only thing I have is a university diploma. Yeah, which is like owned by most. Okay, so that's about it. It's similar in the U.S. The only possible difference is that there's a huge labor shortage in the U.S., but it's mostly for shitty low. Paying jobs that nobody wants to do. The jobs that pay well, have decent working conditions, seem to have insane competition. I mean, if you're asking me to guess, not, not just guess, like, that kind of could be the reason why, you know, the immigration is kind of loosened up to both create competition and uh, just fill up the low end jobs. <clears throat> okay. It really kills motivation when you have to compete for minimum wage. What's the point of a job if you don't get the reward? I mean, the thing is, like, if you live in a world where you have to have a job to live, and you're not getting a job, then what? Then what do you play? Seriously, what do you play? I'm not even saying that it's glamorous, but suppose, like, it was just guaranteed that you have a job for sure, right? Um, you may think that this is, like, naive. But, I mean, suppose you have living costs, right? And you can't meet those living costs. Then what is the what is the game? What is the system? Oh, yeah, I feel a lot of people in the Western countries don't re realize the implications of extreme competition. I think, they, I think they don't feel it at the top. Because the richer you are, the less likely that you're exposed to it. I mean, competition... Well, capitalism is kind of really depends on how much you like capitalism really depends on how rich you are that's it <clears throat> i've heard a lot although you might have to not care about people because like you know people probably see like dozens of die by the time you're like 18 in capitalism i mean just personally uh know them i heard that, uh, a lot about south korea's competitive atmosphere and the hell 
Well, Jazz on Monicare, I probably watch. Okay, this is too specific. Let's keep going. The fact that 99% of the jobs offer such a laughably low pay and are absolutely not worth the effort required to do them just solidifies my belief that people who run these companies are psychopaths. I mean, companies itself are at least sociopaths. They are at least, well, well at least that. Arguably psychopaths. I mean, they are just designed to maximize profit. That's it. I mean, not really up to the people. And the, the reality is that you might think like, oh yeah, there's going to be a good company. There won't be. There can be. Because if, if some companies start like, oh yeah, we've got to be the good guys, and the other guys are more competitive, then this guy is going to die. So it's it's a race to the bottom. You have to be the most savage, the most most brutal. And, and not just doing the legal stuff, but whatever is illegal. you got to do that too. To be the most brutal savage company that kills other companies and beat the ultimate goal of building a monopoly. Although you might be, you might have a, a fake, or at least a pretend competition to not get the full on monopoly label. But even at that point, you're just like, you know, you have a pretend competition, so not real one. Sociopaths, psychopaths. But I would even argue that sociopaths, psychopaths wouldn't love this because they would be still screwed. I mean, they might like it if you're, if they're at the top, but if somebody is a sociopath and at the bottom, or at least not at the high end of the ladder, they're, they're still screwed, right? Yeah, people are trying to move to better countries, but which one is the better one here? Mm hmm. Inheritance not work has become the main route to middle class ownership. <laughs> I mean, the house, this is UK. And the house prices are so uh, kind of pricey that you're not going to... Well, you might be able to buy a house um, eventually, but like that's not going to be a reality. Really. I mean, it kind of went from like maybe like born in a first world country and then work hard to, to born in a first world country and have rich parents. So if your family can give you a home, you just keep four year mortgage with job slave contracts to it if you're not going to inherit any... Also, that's got to be a big, big advantage. Uh, that kind of a big problem with mortgage that it might actually just lock you in place. Uh, might miss out on better opportunities. If you're not going to inherit any home, or your parents have a second house, good luck. You're going to need it. <laughs> Over time, access to middle class status will be better. Will become uh, more and more closely bound up with, uh, yeah, inheritance. It's almost like housing is a human right and you sh should not be hoarded and monopolized for the profit of parasitic elites. It's not just elites. I mean, it's one of the main ways people try to make money. And it, it's kind of... Capitalism is kind of messed up, right? I I'm sorry, but I have to say this. That, I mean, there is like a big interest. Like, you can say that we have scarcity. That's fine. But there is also an incentive, a profit, in keeping things scarce. scarce. And like housing right and that's why everyone's just trying to buy all the houses and like be a landlord right just just rent stuff so like own the land or own the house and then the people just gotta pay you because like they have no choice right i mean that's the only game in town and you, you own it and you own them in a way we have like neo-feudalism and maybe if not everything is bought the, the price of the properties is also like driven up by, by a lot because of this. I mean, the only way to really combat this is just to keep building houses like, like crazy. But even that might not work out. Like there are countries like Aust Austria, I think, that have like social housing, which basically like has rent that is like super cheap. And I think that would work. But maybe like people can own like one house, something like that. <clears throat> I think it's like, like, yeah. The, the country should build more houses, and it should not be artificially scarce. Uh, because it's like the top investment, but it may not, may not be the case, because like, it's kind of a weird example, but like, I'm from Hungary, originally, and I'm not saying that communism was good, but they built those ugliest, big-ass houses, and like, I mean, and I kind of fixed it. I'm not saying it was glamorous, and obviously I was 
I mean, it's kind of like living after it, essentially. But people had a place to live. I guess that was okay. It's the same thing. Just matter how much money you have, neat and retired. Yeah, that's an excellent point, right? I mean, needs are hated because they don't contribute. But those who are parasitical are not hated. They are like glorified. It's like, oh my God, teach me how to, how can I also uh, get uh, millions from my daddy? Something like that. After working a strenuous two months, I retired to live for the rest of my life on a beautiful estate of my parents' basement. It's even rent controlled. <laughs> I mean, I think... <laughs> yeah. Strenuous. Yeah, it's worth saying that some jobs, you should quit. And it's kind of hard to say. But, I mean, it is true. If it's like destroying your physical or mental well-being, you need to consider that. Especially physical. You, you might be exaggerating the mental one, the mental part, but like physical, that's clear. Hmm. Uh. The issue with NEAT is money. Full stop, the end. The title. So, this is why society and normies don't like us. They hate us because they ain't us. Because if everyone had 5 million in the bank, no one would work. This is not actually true, but like, they might do... They do what they want, which would... Might benefit people, but they probably wouldn't do something that they are forced to do. Ever. Uh, 95%. Uh. Okay, okay. It's only about the money. He's not wrong. And I'm going to read all of it. They did the experiment on this. They found out that people uh, who start to have uh, money and no bills eventually start to focus on developing copies and skills uh, just for fun. And maybe not just that. People and ideas flourish. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you meant it goes forward, right? You don't have to enslave them for it. I wouldn't even consider rich pe people playing a tutorial mode. They're using cheat codes. <laughs> I mean, there wouldn't be this much resentment if the gap wouldn't be this big, right? I mean, no one's really, like, resenting someone who's, like, working hard for it. But at this point, like, it, it's not about, like, doing work, but, like, just owning things, right? And people kind of resent that, rightfully so. Congrats, VG. Shop worker awarded 40 sassy draws for 40 years of service. Somehow, I have a sneaking suspicion what he's going to get for his 41th service you know yeah it, it might be 41 sassy draws just saying <laughs> mm. okay <clears throat> humiliation ritual but that will come out of your next paycheck <laughs> you used to get rolex for 30 years now it's sausage for 40. <laughs> for 40 is a lot congrats now get back to work this is depression as fuck <laughs> Oh my god. You know what? what's fucked up about the whole thing? The dude actually looks grateful and super happy that he has been recognized by the higher-ups. I saw this same look from a manager many years ago when the execs or the director would tell him thank you or good job. It was like it meant the entire world to him. I mean, people are kind of con conditioned to care about that status, which is kind of messed up. I mean, I'm not saying that you can care about it. I'm just saying that if you're forced to it, in this situation, it's not great. I mean, maybe this guy is just loving it. I'm not, I don't know. It's only messed up if, if you're forced. I'm wrong for this, and I know it's wrong for me to feel this way, but I really hate wage slaves who seek validations. I mean, thing is, they are, people are kind of conditioned and programmed for this. I mean, I, I would claim that people are kind of programs. Hmm. Mm hmm I mean, it's not enough that you do it. You have to like it. That's pretty much it. Applying to jobs is the most humiliating experience. Explain to us in two words why you want to work with us. Send a video, presentation, and introduce yourself to us. That's got to... Does this guy actually apply to works? Uh, to, to jobs? Because that's not really a much of a thing. AK dancing for your comp... No, that's not a thing. I mean, okay. Attach a CV and a cover letter. Again, this is not really a thing, unless they are, like, really weird. But in this case, you just don't do it. So this is not a thing. I mean, there are many, many, many critiques we can we can uh, talk about here. But 
I don't know. Next page makes you type at the whole cover letter again. <laughs> yes. Uh, I mean, that's kind of a test of desperation. And if it's not enough, then comes the further humiliating video interview where up to three corporate goose will interrogate and scrutinize you. Today's hiring practices are complete bullshit. Yeah, that's kind of a kind of messed up. It's it's just keeping HR. Maybe <laughs> I don't know. A HR. I think that's kind of messed up that that the workers get laid off, but the HR doesn't. So I don't know. Uh, of course, I might be generalizing here. They're just trying to look for uh, the next unicorn to replace a worker. Hey, I know. Yeah, but the point is, this is this could be unrelated to uh, subreddit. Uh, arguably, the needs don't know that much about this. But I mean, applied jobs and like the, the job rate that subreddits are kind of like in pain too. Him just looking at job adverts makes me very depressed. I mean, they're just delusional, right? The language they all use, like, you aren't a real person. I mean, they're probably bots, right? That's it. Although, also, like, who's really writing it? <laughs> you, you, could, um, you could... You could tell that the person writing the... The job posts uh, doesn't even know what the job does. It's just like, oh, yeah, I just, like, edit everything. And, like, uh, they just applied. It's like... Uh, do you have like uh 50 years of experience with rust it's like oh yeah this guy has 50 years of experience Rust, we need that guy it's easy it's a very fair world indeed golden piano be grateful for what you have <laughs> worked together <laughs> oh my god society is just that the rich and the poor alike were forced to stay in their homes uh, there were tons of celebrities posting about how awful it was that they had to be stuck in their multi-million dollar mansions and things were so hard because the laundry maid got sick so the other maid had to cover <laughs> so it took so long <laughs> to get king clothes and people gladly watch these uh, videos on their 10 minute breaks from their second essential working jobs of the day <laughs> oh my god fucking clown world yeah people get brainwashed to work 40 hour week so the queen can uh, enjoy her lavish uh, golden piano. Mm. And the thing is, even if the world was great, I mean, people gotta resent this. Yeah. That is just human nature. I mean, you might say like, oh yeah, these guys are like salt, salty bitches. They need to get over it. But did she like earn this, right? I mean, people would be more accepting of it. The worst thing is that the society actively uh, punishing people for being victims of abuse or having genetically imposed disorders and diseases. Society is just evil. Not evil, but like, you, you gotta look at it like from the perspective of nature, right? It's almost like, yeah, survival of the fittest. They don't care about you. People might put on a brave face, but I'm not, not saying this to, to be too negative. But people generally don't care. I mean, people might care though if they know you, but like, yeah, just look at some some hopeless uh, homeless guy, and everyone just walks past them real fast. That's pretty much it. No one's really helping them. And when they go away, it's like, oh yeah, I'm like, hey, 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 went away, so good. But like, yeah, they went away, like downstairs, or <clears throat> well. Well, the aristocracy trolling the co commoners, it's sickening. <laughs> Alright. I hate American culture. I hate how everything is a brutal fucking competition. Why is that every man is expected to be a perfect Chad, who is the breadwinner for his family and can support his pregnant wife on his one sole salary? I mean, this was the past. I guess the mindset didn't evolve that much. Bumi might be still expecting a provider, most likely. That's kind of a um, a problem in this day and age where, I mean, most women are actually kind of having a better opportunities and like uh, most more, more women are getting college education, so it's got to be rough. It's basically impossible to get a job these days. I mean, you can get, but well, most people have a job, so like, that's a bit of an exaggeration. Why does America refuse to give out universal basic income? Uh, they don't even have Medicare, so I wouldn't expect UBI from America first, personally. <clears throat> there are a lot of young people now 
who will never pick the world of the perfect man who absolutely will need UBI in the future. The thing is, they don't care whether you live or die. That's it. <laughs> in fact, I mean, even right now, I imagine how many people are, well, no, you don't have to imagine it, just look at the stats, how many people are, can't have, can't have, can't start a life, can't even move out, can't, can't start families, I don't care. It's good for business. Why does America refuse to help anyone with anything? I mean, if it's good for my pocket, then that's it. it it's kind of messed up, even in a European perspective. It's all about making the rich people richer. Yeah, yeah. Unless people do something about it, it's just going to be like that. Things are just going to get worse. Nothing else. Life is a competition everywhere. America is just hyper-capitalistic, hyper-consumerism nation that exemplifies it more. I mean, if you're in America and you, you happen to have a house, you're almost the best thing you can do is just sell it and move to a cheap country. And then you're like, boom, retired. Assuming you have that. If you stay in America, then almost always, almost certainly the, the healthcare costs will bankrupt you. So, I mean, America is very far from a dream, I would say. Right now. GP. You can walk through someone's life, find out if they are reasonably embedded in hierarchy of social institutions. I mean, you might not enjoy the hierarchy, right? If they are not, no intimate partner, is there a hierarchy? No family, no children, no friends, no job, no career, no education pathway, no engagement in civic responsibility, no church attendance, a spiritual life, no routine, then they're not depressed. They're just having a horrible life, multidimensionally. Yeah, we got life sucks problems, sure. Bullshit. Nobody checks out from society right after coming out from the womb. All people attended school, some people had friends, some had relationships, and some people had jobs. The problem, these people felt broken. Like any out there, you isolate yourself because alienation, not become an alien after isolation. I mean, maybe they had some problems right from the get go, and uh, society was not super welcoming to that. Or they had some hiccups. <clears throat> if you're without all those things, without being a bad guy, I wager the system that allows it to happen is the problem. Ah. Uh. I mean, thing is, what well, people hate to admit that, I mean, these needs could be just applying to the jobs, and that's it. They're doing what they can within the system, and that's it. It's not that they are losers. This is the system, right? Normies go insane at the idea of someone can have a, no job, no partner, no children, who do these and still be happy. I mean, sure, but I would... Or, I would agree with his kind of like approach that they have like life sucks problems. But naturally his approach is a little bit too focused on the individual. No one was going to be like, yeah, let's throw over the government or something. Right? Because if some, suppose like somebody already does all they can, then what else is left? And then he goes on to promote social Darwinism. Uh, does he? <laughs> so wrong <laughs> I mean it's easy to promote would he promote it if like he was like born in like Africa or something I mean he would be still there he would be the, the loser he is describing most likely collecting plastic bottles to be honest when I had a job I was still depressed even more so actually because it sucked and made my life miserable uh. the order piece of this is sigh up to get loser man to accept life servitude Mm hmm People never say like, oh yeah, uh take my seat or something like that. Or throw down the system that benefits me. Never hear that. I was gonna be like, oh yeah, uh, climb the hierarchy that you can do it. Something like that. Hmm. Yeah, all that being famous and didn't stop him from getting into to Benzo and almost committing <laughs> self termination. That's interesting. That's very interesting. So, I mean, I would give him the advice to not do those things. I mean, he's a, he's a smart guy. Just why, why did you do that? So, this kind of points that, I mean, giving advice is fucking stupid, man. Why did you do the Benzo? 
Now, I don't necessarily disagree with this take. I think this is a useful take, but he could be a little bit blind to like, okay, what if what if they are already doing all they can and it just doesn't work? Hmm? It's just GG, right? Why is it so hard for Norbis to admit that life is a game of luck? I, I think that's obvious. I mean, it depends on how deluded they are, but like, I, I would admit it. But the thing is about luck that, I mean, sure, Life is like 99.9% .9 luck, but the rest is kind of like effort, right? Basically what I say in the title, life is a game of luck. You can be lucky enough to be born with good genetics, raised by a good parents, with good financial condition. You can be lucky enough to be in, in the right place at the right time and get a good job. <clears throat> yeah, 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 luck. I mean, people like to imagine. Well, let, let's just see, see what the needs are saying. I find it frightening that the less you have, the less others believe you deserve protection. Oh yeah, that's a good point. I mean, nobody likes the, the homeless guy, right? They just like, walk past him. I mean, they probably think all his problems are his own fault, right? And people like status. They just like, like to imagine themselves superior to others, which is contingent on others losing out. And of course, if you're born lucky, I mean, born in a, under good circumstances, you probably uh, pride yourself on a lot of it, right? It's like, oh yeah, I went to a good school and something, whatever. You just pride yourself on it. I have the the job that may, pays me four hundred thousand, something like that. And those who don't have it are just need to work hard or something like that. And you might not even see that there's anything wrong with this because it was true for you. If life, if the world only had you in it, then maybe maybe you played well. Oh, de well, depending on the, the hand you had. Right? Because they want to believe that things are fair even if they see otherwise, as you said. It's all because people prefer to think they earned everything and they are in control. Yeah, yeah. That's a good point. People like to think the world is just, but I think it goes even farther than that. People just like don't care. They just don't care. Like, are you useful to me? That's it. Because uh, then they would admit their own success was luck rather than all hard work. And the ego won't allow them to do that. Uh, people really can't admit that the luck factor. Like, people just do startups and like, if the startup work out, they're like, oh my god, I'm a business genius! And But you never hear of the guys who like, you know, did their like 20, like 20 something startups and then they worked out. Right? That's it. Yeah. They played, they played too. It didn't work. So what? But for those it worked, it's like, Yes, of course. Of course it works. I know, because it worked for me. I think I just love running away from everything in my life. If someone's dick to me, hide. If someone is interested in getting to know me, run away. Ooh. This part doesn't make any sense to me, because logically, it would only bring something good. Although, I mean, they might not like who you are, at least currently, if you're in need. An important thing to wait out the time and decide if it's not worth doing then when the time gets too low mm, that's, a, that's just a lot of fear maintain friendships a fear about things not working out things working out yeah a lot of fear get a career doing yeah pretty much the same problem no idea how people like us are meant to survive yeah yeah so high fear this could be good this could be good as long as you can conquer it my cousin had been a neat for uh, 18 years. Is his psyche permanently ruined or is there hope for recovery? He's currently 40, graduated the university when he was 22. Yeah, that, that probably will not come for much. From the age of 22 to present every single hour of the day has been totally discretionary video games for now. And now his parents are finally fed up and cutting him off financially. Will this be a death sentence or will it shock him into action? This is just nonsense people tell to themselves to feel better. Yeah, this is like GG. Probably. Yeah, professional, he's not getting that, right? This is just something that people say if you're like upper class or something. Soldier to the very end, he'll probably end up homeless. Probably worse. Yeah, not much hope here. Hope here. Yeah, GG, I think. These people who recommend jobs for needs have never tried to get jobs themselves. Government jobs? Yeah, data entry. Yeah, my thing is, if people give you a fucking advice, that's probably a, a bad call. It's just they basically just tell you to fuck off, right? It's like, oh yeah, do this, do that, do that. 
Most of all, give me money, right? I mean, if you want to help me, just give me money, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I can elaborate this, but like, it's nonsense. The government jobs are difficult either because of the strict requirements or the veteran preference. Uh -huh. Let's see. Our society is changing so fast that previous generations grew up in a completely different world. They don't know how to operate in today's society anymore than younger people do. Yeah. If you lost your stuff and you're older and you were just forced into the, the meat grinder like the young people, you know where you would end up. The advice that worked for them doesn't work anymore because we're in a new era. And the same thing happened to me when I was unemployed and in job searching. It drove me nuts. Women can do trades. <laughs> okay. But that might not be a good advice. You just gotta evaluate based on the circumstances you're in, I suppose. A propaganda proving the future. Yeah. It's worth saying that this uh, subreddit is kind of dark. Hmm. What's the fucking point anyway? I can't hold a job, it seems. Everyone is against me for some reason. Even if I had a stable job, there would be no point. Me just working my ass off to come home to an empty apartment and repeat the cycle until requirement. Yeah. And th this is interesting because you might need the reason to do the thing before you do the thing, right? <laughs> no one wants me because I'm ugly, so I'm destined to live alone. All the cops are getting old. Video games don't feel the same anymore. That's a good line. Uh, whenever I think about offing myself in my mind, I feel at peace. I feel like my suffering has finally come to an end. I just don't want to do it. Mm. This is like early retirement. I just don't want to do it because uh, I don't want to hurt my family. Damn, man. This is pretty rough. Sorry for the dark post, but lately I kind of been feeling lost. As hopeful as I've been recently, this same feeling still looms over me in the background. Uh -huh. I don't find any meaning in this life either, except being healthy. Uh -huh. True. So, yeah. Brutal. <laughs> Alright. Why do people think everyone can be in a high-end job? I see this on the internet a lot. People seem to think that everyone can work a high-end job if they just tried hard enough. I don't really understand this mindset at all. It makes no sense. First, not everyone has the same abilities. So people simply cannot work in high-end jobs even if they tried really hard. Uh, second, even if we all had the same abilities and worked hard, you can't have an economy where the only jobs are high-end. high color jobs, and skill trade jobs. Uh, yeah, but some people kind of seem to, yeah, just world fallacy. Yeah, yeah. People, people love that. If you, whatever you have, you deserve it. That's the just world fallacy. And you might, you might think that. Ah, uh, yeah. It's not good. I mean, this just makes us a very, a very, uh, very cold toward those who are unfortunate. I and mean, if I said that, you know, that people in Africa not having uh, great lives, then you probably was like, oh yeah, it's because of Africa, maybe. But if they are born in a okay country, then like it's it's entirely their fault because everyone could do it, right? Just learn to code. Yeah. I mean, I would argue that this is not a great advice. I mean, even less so these days. But this is not something that is ideal for, I would argue, most people. Coding. Even if everyone got, even if everyone got into high-end jobs, these fields would become oversaturated and a huge supply of people in these skills would make these jobs, the careers, worthless. I mean, you have to... Even if you run with it, I mean, it would just mean that whoever works the hardest, the, the very hardest, would get the job and rest don't. Assuming everyone is equal. Meaning that not just putting in their 40 hours, but putting in like 100.
Although, just to circle back, I mean, it may be just uh, getting connections, right? Having low IQ is hell. I saw a video that said the US Army would not employ anyone with IQ less than 83, because they could not do anything productive. Then they say it's insane, because the, what happens to those uh, with IQ of uh, less than 83? Under 70, IQ gets you disability money in my country, so what happens to people in between? You know what? Also, I'm 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 not sure you would even get money with 70 IQ. I mean, yeah, so something that doesn't take too much to learn and they can just repeat a lot. That that would be the thing. Assuming they don't just something like that. Having low IQ doesn't mean you have to be a permanent. Yeah, yeah. I mean, there are plenty of dummies out there. They're just fine. Be happy you aren't qualified for the army. I'd rather have a... Okay, not a fan of the army. Uh, and the thing is, the the demand, well, how much demanded from you, it kind of goes up over time for the jobs, generally speaking. <clears throat> I think 99%, 99.9% of our fate is defined your citizenship. I'd rather be poor Norway citizen than rich Afghan citizen, your genetic traits, your family. Yeah. That's a good point. How the fuck I'm supposed to compete with that many people? Security officer, unarmed. This employer typically responds within one day. Around 10,346 and 10,350 people have been up have applied on Indeed. Mm. I mean, there's a chance. There is a chance. I don't care about contributing to society. If I could get need bucks for life and never have to apply for another job again, I would do that. Mm. This is actually very interesting because, like, people not might not start like this, but, like, the society. I mean, you basically care about society as much as society cares about you. Right? And how much is that? Yeah, who cares about contributing to society while doing this for ourselves? <laughs> Okay. I love people. I care about people. I want to help people and make their lives better, but there are only so many ways I I can actually do that. The fact that those ways generally don't make for great career paths means that I cannot support myself. It's fucking exhausting. I mean, this is actually interesting because, like, in a society where... Assuming this person is not coping, in, in a society where there was no money, like, you can just do whatever you want, and if it just helps people... Like, suppose you just went out there and, like, just helped the homeless. Something like that. Well, of course, I'm using homeless in from our society. And it helped people. But it made you no money, right? You don't, don't get paid for it. But it helps them. And it probably helps society, too. But you don't get paid, for sure. <sighs> Modern society is nothing but a uh, festering, putrid, toxic cesspit. That fucking stinks. I mean, I mean, the point is like I'm just arguing that a lot of things that add well, at least some things that add value to society, they are not financially rewarded. I don't care about society, only my family. Okay. Yeah, this is kind of even worse in in like a Western setting where everyone's like individualism, this and that. I mean, sure, you can argue that it's big part indoctrination, but in the Western setting, is that it, it's it's not even that it's anything else but like just individuals standing for themselves luck is real and people need to stop denying it i was thinking about some of the people i know today and i have to say that most of the people i know are doing well are not really self-made people most people i know who are doing well financially especially if they are under 50 had a ton of help from people for example almost everyone i know under 50 yeah this is they basically just got their stuff. All right. What? I definitely agree. People are turned off by the world word luck, though. They probably feel like uh, it trivializes the word they put in. I mean, in a deterministic way, it's all luck. And no one likes to think that. I would, I would even argue that it's not necessarily useful, although it might make you more aware of the reality of, of people.
Even though you, you don't need to believe in determinism just to realize that, I mean, your, your circumstances matter a lot. I mean, if you just look at the zip code, even in America, I mean, where you were born basically defines how much money you will make. This, luck is everything. I've been arguing with people for years about this, but it's, it's, it doesn't matter, right? I mean, luck is everything, but also like, also you can't change it. The boomers absolutely didn't want to hear it. Yeah. yeah. I mean, luck is everything, but also it's like super annoying. If others kind of deny it, they fought me hard that they make your own luck. Sure. I mean, sure. Certainly. Nowadays people don't give as much a pushback, but the idea of making your own luck is still pretty strong. I mean, especially if they happen to be lucky. They're going to be a big believer in luck. <clears throat> or, uh, actually, don't believe in luck, I guess. The better off they are, the more likely they deny it to be luck. Mm. Because their only jumping off point is, is their own life. I mean, maybe not the only, but that, that is their main jumping off point. Everything is luck, random. Sure, random. Yes, luck and bias. The meritocracy is false. And it is it is true for the chum, right? I think it's healthy to keep this in mind from time to time. And they should be clear about it in school. So people uh, stop propping themselves up and others up in imaginary pedestals. I mean, if you happen to run into a deluded rich boy, then they're going to be brutalized in a true merit meritocracy. Like, even in the game, like, you can be the, the whale. It's actually a very interesting phenomenon, because if you join games where are, are, that are kind of like true meritocracies, although, like, having a time to get good is, in a way, is, is a massive advantage. But suppose that is a given. But still, you can't buy a victory. So I guess the, the play-to-win games are do, do really... A, appeal to the the rich boys who just like to feel like a winner with their wallet. <laughs> Hard work only goes so far. People who are lucky will never admit that they made it in life due to sheer luck. Yeah. Who's gonna say that? Like, oh yeah. Everything I did was just luck. What you call luck, I call circumstance. Neither are things within our control. Yeah. It's actually interesting because, like, if you... Because if you look at optimistic people, let's call them optimistic or positive, whatever, they could be realistic in certain way. Like, okay, like they they are looking for opportunities, but they might be missing the the pitfalls and 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 the reality that pessimistic, but may, not necessarily pessimistic, but like realistic uh, people kind of see. Like the needs know that it's luck, right? And if someone's like optimistic. Might think like, oh yeah, man, I'm like a big winner. It's all about like mindset and optimism. Even though they like started upper middle class and like, and uh, basically just uh, made it work. Which I'm not taking away from them. Just, just kind of pointing out that that's not the reality for everyone. You are only neat if you're poor. Those with means often they haven't earned, have no qualms about living degenerate lives, way more degenerate than any need. You also have. You also only have stigma if you're poor. Even having a few million makes you a proper upstanding citizen, but even like 300k can be enough to avoid wage slavery. My point is, the needs are not stigmatized for being useless, but for being poor. Maybe for having dealt a bad hand or playing it badly, yet would not matter if you had the cash. Would any of you change anything, given the means? Even if you're striving and others don't care, they only care about how useful you are to them. I knew a guy who got rich by playing poker that they invested into Bitcoin and didn't give anyone anything. He was hated for playing, for, for crypto, for getting rich and not sharing. Society just wants you to be their slave and heed their commands. Yet they can stick all their good job stickers, guilt and shame up their ass. You don't have to be mob, and if you want to, it's likely because others told you to be. I can guarantee you degenerates with means. I can guarantee you, the germ with means are loving it, but simultaneously thinking you deserve to not exist. <clears throat> Damn, spicy, spicy one. True, the premise of fire is becoming a need in a socially acceptable way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is cool. Uh, fire is cool. 
it's neat if you're poor and retirement if you're not. <laughs> Damn, man. Just what policy is the foundation of normies mind. And conformity is the pillars and neurotypicality is the walls and roof. Money is doors and windows. That is the normie mind. Damn, man. Spicy, spicy topic, but I kind of like it. Yeah, they are being stigmatized for having low status and no perceived power. It's not like anything would change just because you start uh, wage slaving at McDonald's, yeah? I don't think it's true. My parents were decently wealthy. I was still very judged when I was neat. Hmm. I mean, but you can just do some bullshit, right? If anything, people judge me more for having the resources to study and work and not doing it due to mental illness. Oh. Interesting. Yeah, I guess, I guess the crown comes with expectations in, in a way, right? But also, like, if you just look at the top colleges, I mean, mostly the elite attends it and the upper class. I mean, sure, some some poor people make it in, but that's kind of the reality. So now I wish I were neat with life support by government. I don't think that's good enough, because then you're... Your living depends on government, right? I mean, I understand that that would be better than nothing, but I think it would be ideal if people had the means to support themselves, or at least if if at all, in a reasonable way. I mean, even if they had the investments, suppose you had like some money and investments, let's go with that. And wouldn't that be better than hoping that the government gives you some money? Okay, so it's not just money. Yeah, society shames you because you're working class and you... Actually, working class used to be called the lower class. <laughs> they just renamed it. And you should be making barely enough to get by, but immediately attribute all your income to consumerism, to prop up the ruling class, and whatever enterprise their kids are starting. It's also why fellow working class would look at you horrified that you are not working, even though you have very good health reasons. Yeah. I mean, it's kind of a bit of a crabs in the bucket mentality. Not really. People generally don't care. Think about needs at all. Yeah, that's a good point, but they, they might hate them. You misinterpreted the situation. Needs are stigmatized for being different. Normies hate all people who are different. Not true. If you were rich, they would love you. We know this to be true. Why is the suicide rate in the trans community so high? Mm. I mean, he's not wrong in a say in a way that if you're differently superior, like, they love that. If you're just different, they hate. That's it. As long as you have money and independence, uh, no one bothers you. If you don't have money or you're not independent, someone might bother you about it. Yeah. If you're poor and uh, live like a need, they call you a loser. But if you're rich, they'll call you a free man. Mm -hmm. I do not understand normie dating. Basically, you meet a stranger online, then you talk to him in a fake personality and he fakes too. I mean, might, might be not. I mean, if you don't fake, then that might just chase away people. Well, and that's a good thing. So you don't have to bother with them, right? And then there is a chance you go to this stranger's house and then you sleep with him. And you, you have no idea who he is, if he has an STD or something. I would be worried to let random dude enter, even enter my apartment, or the combos are so shallow. I mean, you're just assuming, it. Yeah? About stuff like Netflix. I mean, just assuming. It's incomprehensible to me that two people get meet and in such a short date. It's like a different reality. Yeah, the thing is, you are describing a certain scenario. And it doesn't have to be that. Right? There's some looking for some dopamine. I mean, it doesn't have... Yeah, it doesn't have to be that. Right? Because online dating is not real dating. Actual Norbies find partners through school, college, work, social, events. So, and also... Uh, that's aromatic. I don't get it either. Uh, okay. That's a good point, that. I mean, if you're not entangled in normal life, you might realize that normal life is kind of messed up in, in many ways. It's like, okay. I mean, I'm not saying that it's necessarily wrong. I'm just saying that, like, it is called normal. 
but like just because it's common even if it wasn't common before so i wish someone would save me i'm in such a dark place right now and i don't see a way out no jobs being calling back and i keep getting rejection emails so this is interesting because like they're called needs but like in a way they are kind of trying to get out right i'm running out of money i'm losing the will to even leave my room this is, this is a problem right i just want to be saved by someone i want to be free from this home yeah i think at in life you're gonna have this feeling at least once and then you realize that no one cares not they don't care but like they might be looking for an edge like oh just give me some money okay Unfortunately, what I learned over the years that is no one's going to save you. You have to save yourself. All right. I mean, this way can be liberating in a very dark way. I'm not sure people had this revelation. Because you might live, go through life hoping that someone's going to have your back and no one will. <laughs> Me too. Although some someone might have, but like, who knows? Me too. Projection left and right, despite having uh, what they ask for. Yeah. I mean, thing is, like, it's competition. Like, everyone against everyone. Uh. I've gotten almost no help my whole life outside my parents. Most people are not going to help you because they're selfish. Yeah. Well, what's in it for me? They want the good job over others getting it? Yeah. That's that's fine. I'm, I'm not even sure I can... Yeah, we can't even blame them for this. That's fine. They want a good-looking partner over you. That's just how it works. Yeah, this is a pretty realistic take. So this is not something to beat yourself up about. But it is a, a bit harsh. Harsh truth. No one's coming to save you. People are too worried about themselves. And getting more narcissistic. Psychopaths every day. Even many needs wouldn't give a fuck. And downvote and shit on you. Because uh, you... Want to change or are they improving and uh, and have something going on? So, <clears throat> yeah. Wish I could, but I'm mostly useless. Yeah. Do you need emotional support? <laughs> I got that to spare. <laughs> oh my god. Mm. It's kind of rush. Uh, rough. <clears throat> the thing is, I don't think it really... I, I like this comment the most. It really should not be the responsibility of anyone per particular to save you. Even if they are your parents, but we sh probably should have a society that kind of deals with it because we have a society where everyone just like suppose someone just falls over and like that's it, just GG, GG for life, right? They were even a society like that, so they that's it, they have nothing to look forward to, just offing themselves, right? And you kind of hope, like, oh yeah, maybe they're gonna turn over and they gotta eat rock butter or something, but like that's just not how that works, you know, as early as you catch them and you try to correct their trajectory the better right not they completely given up hope after like eight years they can't get a job something like that and again like even in this context people might say like oh yeah because it is their fault but you don't know that right you don't necessarily know that why your advice given by no needs is so half assed and useless i try to make genuine effort to be kind but one thing that really irks me is whenever somebody makes a post about unemployment, there's always normies who mention that they used to be neat and now they work six figure jobs. The real answer is luck and connection. <laughs> it's also skills too, but like, uh, every situation is different. They just don't intend to validate themselves. They don't have any sincere interest or concern. Damn, man. Just think how it is. That pirate Marky. The thing is, you would not hear like you can you can critique Reddit for for being what it is, but yeah, you you're just gonna get lied to constantly in real life. They did not deal with the same struggles as you, has no understanding of the root issues you face. Yeah, it lasted like an asshole. Everyone has one. Most of the time, it just thinks and makes you look like an asshole. Most of the advice given is either there to brag, make the advice giver feel good about themselves. Look how. Kind I am. I'm helping poor stranger on the internet. <laughs> it could be control. If, if they personally know you, it could be just control. Right? They're looking to dominate you, look down. Well, I guess they're just feeling good about it. But it, it's not just like trying to feel good. Oftentimes, well, it could be like have something to gain, right? Or they just gaslight you. Yeah. I just validate their worldview, right? 
friends do things for each other. Friends don't say, here's some advice, but I won't do anything to help you. Yeah. I mean, most people would might give you advice, but would not give you one dollar, right? I mean, you. that's it. I thought I'd ask some of my co-workers for invitation to a party, and they all did say, here's some advice how to get invited to parties, but I won't invite you to a party. <laughs> yeah. Ah, people are kind of fake. I'm a Fortnite, and there's the reality. It's complicated. Mm. I kind of like... The thing is, I kind of like it when people are straight with me. That, that That's good. Even if the reality is not rosy. Spend months learning game dev, slowly realizing it's a huge waste of time. So the plan was to make a game and make enough money to get on my toes, just salvage one or two years of my life that I wasted them fit back into society. Hope, that's good. It was pure delusion. <laughs> you know, it's it's kind of crazy how those things are like synonymous. It was better I, I was better off working at a fast food place or something. The market is extremely saturated with developers who are better than you and have uh, more resources than you. Full teams, I'm not just a single person, all talented and hardworking. Amazing games come out every single day. It's almost impossible to get your games on console. It's extremely hard to get attention on Steam. I mean, it's just trying to make a game worth anyone's time is a, a challenge. So yeah, I I don't know how to feel. Because I hated myself for not having any skills, then I gained a skill that's kind of worthless. Hmm. Welcome to the NHK. An enemy that I, I, I haven't seen, so... This does not mean nothing. This is an issue with programming in general. If you are super good and can socialize, stuff on that end. Is this correct? I don't know. I don't think so. But it is saturated right now, for sure. And game dev is also something that people like. The more people like a thing, the more saturated it is. So, yeah. That's life. Insanely competitive and highly log based. Kudos to you for at least trying. My lazy ass would have <laughs> arrived at that conclusion even before trying. Yeah. To be frank, most skills are worthless. Uh, that's a good point because, like, eventually your skills. The. Well, I, I guess programming would be the best example of this that you might learn something that's relevant right now, but, like, it's not going to be relevant later. So, what is relevant is that you can solve problems, you can, you can get things done, you get results. <clears throat> I guess he learned that. Even though, like, I'm making a game and trying to market it, like, that's gotta be hard. Uh, yeah. Just think any job. What job? Nobody would ever hire me. I can barely get rejection emails for it. <laughs> <laughs> what a lie. There are no jobs I'm actually qualified for. Just apply anyway, bro. Okay. That's a waste of time. They're asking for 10 years of experience and you have 8, sure. And if you have actual shit they are looking for, I have literally nothing they're looking for any, in any job. The only thing I do is exist. I can't even fill a page for resume because I have nothing to put on it other than my name and address. There's literally no reason for any employer to pick me. I'm incapable of changing that. That's, that's a good point. Because, like, you would need someone to give you a shot, but, like, why you? I'm capable of learning anything. Okay, that, that's gotta be incorrect. I've had permanent brain fog since I was a kid. Yeah. My thing is, like... Mm -hmm. My local grocery store requires two years minimum experience. I mean, thing is, like, you should not be, assuming I wasn't clear you should not be assuming that everything they say is correct that it just it just kind of reflects their mindset i definitely try to lean into it as much as i can so to to see to see them i guess it won't happen with me either i literally have a blank resume the reaction would be anger bewilderment laughter most likely all free i mean he's definitely right i'm, I'm not sure about this part yeah, I, I was I was on board this with this, but like literally capable of learning anything, that's not correct. But it kind of shows that, I mean, he's, hmm. yeah. He's not feeling good about it. Hmm. But also, I don't know. I, I guess he, he could be right. Do you know how to cook tendies and play video? <laughs> 
I can put a few things down, but at this point, with my sketchy history, I'm not hap it's not happening either. I got told my resume was barren 12 years ago and did really improve in the interim. Mm. That's actually a very interesting point. If you are unhappy, that can give you some massive brain fog. I should not talk about this. Let's say, like, a friend of me had this. Yeah. And if you're, like, kind of, like, depressed, you can... The entire world can be gray. And you might not even have memory of that time, so... And you need attachment, in a way, to just make memories, I suppose. You need to care about things, else you just... It's like traveling to some traveling somewhere. You don't remember anything. Well, well, assuming it didn't leave an impression for you. I mean, it's like kind of like going to school and you don't care about any of it. That sucks. You don't remember. <sighs> so, I mean, if you're depressed and sad, it's really the, or you just don't care. It's really hard to learn things. So I I may have not been entirely fair here. Yeah. Yeah, I've read the sentence over and over again, never understand that because my mind is incapable of focusing. I could sit still there for thousands of years and not understand the first sentence. I can hyper focus. Hmm. Uh, this is this is uh, about my pay grade. Yeah. Even the job market didn't suck. I mean, what would be your proposition? What would be your proposition to get these people back? Get, 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 no, no, not these people, just, you know, get, get anyone back. Not necessarily jobs, but like, what is, what is our strategy here? Is there anything, or just, the thing is, in a big way, those who lose out serve as warning to those who are still in line, you know? Yeah, you, your job sucks, but... You're not homeless. You're, you're not the guy who's who's living at home with no hope. You're maybe not, not the guy who has no hope of getting a job. So you should be grateful for what you have, even if it's not much. Needham is an expected response to our modern society, at least to some, I guess. In the end, there's just a certain way you have to be to make it in society, and need them arises because some people just will never fit into a wage slave paradigm that society demands. In a way, if we could just dominate it, that would be great. That's why I don't feel bad about being a neat. Mm. And the problem is that we cannot just put people into this category. We got the owners and we got the those who are owned, right? I mean, this might be a bit on the nose way of saying it, but like, we got those who have the jobs and those who offer the jobs. And if you want anything outside of that, I guess you're screwed or somehow you don't fit in that. Because your, your fittingness is essentially evaluated based on how much you can rise to the challenge of modern society, right? Not, not the world, right? But our society, our, our system, right? How much you can fit in this system and thrive in it? And what was your starting position, I suppose? It's not about you. That's why I don't feel bad about being neat. The game was just rigged from the start. No amount of uh, anything was gonna make me mentally all there enough to get a degree and hold a job. I'm not going to let myself ashamed of uh, that or whatever bullshit. There should be like more options, right? If you're neat, thanks to being mentally ill, like me, don't feel bad. The thing is, like, are peop are these people mentally ill? Despite their circumstances or because of it? Because I would argue the second would be most likely. But that we notice that many of them are trying to get jobs. And if, if money was in the picture, then for most, their problems would just disappear. I'm currently a mentally ill neat. I've been uh, years from now trying to unfuck myself and get a job. But sadly, I don't know if I can. Yeah. The thing is, if someone is like this, someone is trying and it doesn't work, is it their fault? Because if you live in a society where, like, you want to have a job, 
and you can't get one, then what do you play? Right? What are they supposed to do? So you say, like, you give them advice, right? You change it yourself. Or just stop existing, something like that. The, these are not very satisfying answers. You kind of assuming that they, they haven't tried, or they, they can try harder. This is the bullshit we tell, right? Or they lost because of their own fault. Life is a rigged game, yeah. More like Needham is a product of their modern society, tried to be a neat in the past as a peasant without uh, welfare, with, without cheap tools, and see how many days you can last before starving to death. Right. But the peasants kind of, did they own their farm? At least they had work, right? I don't know. I'm not saying it's glamorous, right? In any way. So, the needs tend to have a resentment toward the the wage slaves, right? <laughs> but at least the wage slaves can afford to, to live, right? And some of the needs, many of the needs, can't even do that. Anyone here look at the other people's social media and realize it's too late to be normal? All the time. Everyone is in relationships, going to college, traveling, partying. Then he, here we are reading away. So, that's an interesting point. You're never going to get the time back, right? As much as I understand the whole social media's fake sentiment, well, at least it kind of reflects baby life one moment, right? It, it doesn't mean that the entire life is like that. It's not even how it's cherry-picked picturesque edits of people's lives, just the fact that they have anything presentable to put on LinkedIn or Instagram in the first place, or it puts them in the different weight class. Right, right, right. I don't use Facebook, Instagram. That, that's a good thing. That's or they puts your head the most people. Because like, do you want to put your achievements just on social media to feel good and like superior to people? You, you might like that, I guess. I know it's way back in my teens. <laughs> oh my god. It was too late for me to be normal. The second I became a zygote, it doesn't mean I got... What the hell is a zygote? Fertilized egg. It's nice. <laughs> okay. The thing is... Normal. Yeah. But should you be normal? I don't think you need to be normal. You just need to be... With something that you like, right? I say normal is overrated. And normal is almost certainly people are trying to live up to some kind of standard that others have set for them, right? Just do this thing. You you wear the suit and you're normal. You you wear that fucking helmet. You do the thing and you're normal. You you do the, this thing like that and whatever and you're normal. And like, okay... But normal is just stupid. Like, I'm not saying, like, the all normal, all that is very really normal is dumb, but, like, it could be. And if you don't fit in it, that, that does not, doesn't mean it's bad. 100 times yes, I realized this back in middle school. I mean, of course, they are somewhat, like, uh, resentful of, like, or at least sad about missing out things that they would have had. But, I mean, certainly, some some of normal is something you would never want, right? So, I'm, not, I'm saying that normal is not something to aspire to. Just, whatever you want, is. More than 850,000 youngsters, not in education or employment, in the UK. Oh, wow, we. Ever go on to recruiting hell? There's your answer. Employers could be less bigoted and uh, more accommodating, but no. Also, have uh, they tried not charging 9k fees in for education? Of course not. This isn't dissimilar for the leaping of why aren't people having kids by governments and corporations, which have made it life all but impossible for them. People can't have eaten it too. Right. Also, at this point, from a deaf perspective, I don't think you want, or, or just any perspective, you don't want people at all for jobs. They are unreliable, you gotta train them, they're just mad, they can leave, this garbage. If you had a company and like, you know, imagine you bought a company and like, 
it was just it was just people you're just buying people and if they left then like boom you have no company pretty much so it sucks <laughs> but we're just tanked before you would uh correct it and you don't want that what you want is robot want you want software that's that's what you want so in my mind everyone is obsolete we are programmed and the the computer programs are superior to us truly huh if i could have a computer program or a human i mean i would have a the thing is like imagine that the computer programs are kind of like instant nearly instant right and if you add even one human into the mix everything grinds to a halt you never want them you don't want you if you have multiple humans just it's impossible i mean that's why the companies take like multiple years to get something done that some guys like oh yeah like oh, i'm gonna do it like in one weekend that's it they just do it and just keep executing because it's a uh, begins program i'm surprised to figure out it's not higher maybe it is the uk jobs market is terrible salaries are nothing and the cost of living is astronomical there are a whole slew of people from 18 to 40 who are struggling yeah. And how are you gonna how the UK is gonna solve this? They can't. The reality is that the jobs are not coming back. Well, the the, the UK just shot themselves in the they, they have no legs left, right? It was like uh the virus and leaving the EU and AI, they just they have no legs left and privatizing everything, they, they have no legs left. That nothing, no no leave nothing. So I don't know what the UK would do. But I know for a fact that the jobs won't exist to support the people. So so what? But then what? Hmm? Because we're going to be in that reality. And from the Rick and Morty that like we're all the dinosaurs came and and we are useless, right? Economically irrelevant. Maybe it's not going to be this year. Maybe it's going to be next year. I think it's the robots are already being built. So who knows? I, I think like within like 10 years, there's got to be something. <laughs> but also people are not going to have great lives. It's got to be like... You're probably going to have just enough to, to not die. Which is not going to be that great. It's going to be like... Well, I'm, I'm theorizing. It's, it's kind of like the expanse where everyone just gets enough food. And gets food and shelter and that's it. Then you have a hordes of poor people who are like basically provided for, but that, that's it. They have no power. They have nothing. No hope. Basically, underclass forever. And the only hope that those who have uh, above them, I mean, maybe if some of them are born uh, special, maybe they, they rise, but even that is going to be unlikely. Because like we're gonna genetically engineer people, it's kind of already happening a little bit. Some 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 do it like at least you know select the healthy ones. Like okay, that's a bit of an exaggeration, but it's gonna happen, right? And at that point, the only thing the the upper class is gonna hope for is that well, that's kind of already happening that the the underclass and the middle class just disappear, right? <clears> hmm. <throat> hmm. I think this number will increase, and there will be more needs. Not just in the UK, but in most countries. And corporations and capitalists are all to blame. I mean, one thing you can do, and this is realistic, is that instead of... You, just, you can just split up jobs, right? Yeah. So, I mean, suppose you have someone working in the, the supermarket for like 40 hours. And like, if you insist on people having jobs, I mean, like you can say like, you give that job to like three people, right? Job done, right? <laughs> And that would kind of work, I guess. It's not great. Still, they would still need more money, or you just pay people to stay home and not cause trouble because they will. Mm. Rent prices keep rising. Young people can't afford to move out. Inflation, shrinkflation. Yeah, you are legion. <laughs> Damn man, I wonder how many of those 850 are not mentally, physically ill and not working or in school. To me, it sounds that there are not enough programs to support the mentally ill, physically ill. 
to get their up their feet and go to school or get a job. Uh, having experience of those programs, the ones that exist are mostly aimed at getting people with learning disabilities into dead end jobs like cleaning. They feel like borderline abusive. Yeah, that's a problem. The company, well, well, that's not a a too very inaccurate mislip. The country does not necessarily care about you. They should, but like, even look at democracy. Like, going back like ten, well, thousands of years, when they're talking about democracy, like they're like, hmm, you know, wouldn't the people just vote their self interest? Yeah, 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 they would. So that we don't gotta have like, you know, a couple of puppets and like, and they vote for what we want. That's pretty much it. It doesn't matter what people vote, as long as they vote on whoever you like. I feel bad for young people because uh, there really isn't much motivation to work anymore. Those who don't have parents to fall back on will be hurt the most. Yeah, But what if they don't even have that? Just GGG. Just like me. It's been over. Uh, gasping at straws. Uh. Okay. Is reality too cruel? Live in a fantasy. What's the problem? The world is too complex. So we got this guy. Oh man. Is that a real picture? It looks like it. I, I wouldn't blame him, right? People do this a lot. The Lulu Saludo. <laughs> this gives me sword art online vibes. Uh, it is probably real. I hate capitalism, consumerism, society. The thing is. Uh -huh. Every fucking direction you turn, some companies trying to trying their best to extract money from you. No wonder people have depression, anxiety. We live in a success. Yeah. Because the whole point is to make you unhappy. So you buy their stuff, right? And try to avoid consumerism. And supporting corporations as much as possible from my own health health and sanity all the stuff i have used clothes electronics everything i've never eaten at restaurants and consume products from big brands yeah you want to be a, a light consumer just buy what you need not what they want you to buy communist damn man you definitely enjoy capitalism if you're with better seeds but the rampant consumerism is uh for all has the way you were treated in school as a kid and a teenager contributed to you being a need today? I remember as a teenager I was almost obese, bullied, hated at school by almost everyone. I developed pretty bad society, social anxiety as a result. Yeah, I got a part-time job. Yeah, I was too scared. Some people from my school even stalked me online for years. So this wasn't some paranoid delusion. I'm now 24. I feel like it's hard for me to get a job because I was too scared to get one as a teenager and young adult. So I have very little work experience. I also don't, didn't go to college because the stalking and stuff so bad. I feel like I wasn't worthy of decent education. I'm considering doing something in school now. Yeah. So, yeah. 100%. Damn, man. So, yeah, bullying is kind of like domination, right? I'm just trying to beat you up. I mean, that, that is the most, most honest thing others can do to you. They're just trying to beat you up, not for game. Just for you to put you down. That's it. Yeah. That improves their position. It doesn't give them anything, but it just puts you down. Yeah. There are 8 billion people on this world. It doesn't matter. They put you down just to improve their position. I had major social anxiety growing up. Also, like, they get they get the rocks off. There's, like, self-satisfaction self ah, self in it. I had major social anxiety growing up, but I forced myself to go to school anyway. Then college, where I fell apart. I may be autistic because I just never connected with people intimately. Except one special lady who turns out uh, was a GT. As a Gen X adult, I still live alone and rarely go out socially. Okay. I think yes. I mean, you... Just because you don't connect with people, it doesn't necessarily mean that something's wrong with you. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with them. Just and that's just just life, right? If the job uh, paying thirty one an hour that I interviewed with uh, last October didn't drag me out, yeah, 
100% try not to care what people think doesn't work at all yep getting bullied will mark make you lose motivation in life yeah that's why i'm somewhat more critical of dominance hierarchies where like you just get dominated and disciplined because that gonna give you lord helplessness right i mean there's like there was like this one popular trend or like popular topic about like growth mindset is like, oh yeah you need growth mindset but the thing is kids kind of come with growth mindset so you almost have to ask the question although you where are you getting this fixed mindset right sure you might be praising them or like their abilities instead of their work sure i could see that but mostly they just get dominated in school. That's it. Where are you getting your lot of helplessness? Where they are like claiming to uh, teach you growth mindset, right? Not great. I want you to be a real go-getter doing what I want. <clears throat> I remember transferring to a different school and my bully <laughs> just so happened to transfer to the exact same school. It would start me with the whole day that I eventually just dropped out and we moved somewhere new and that's actually just nice yeah if if your parents give a fuck then that's actually just nice because I I, I imagine most parents just let it happen or like you get a man up or something even if the bullies are like you know just a group so you you never had a chance I'm an adult now and still need my GED. I also have to get a job where we move back to my hometown, which I'm not looking forward to because that's where I they live. Yeah. That's pretty good. Just leave the entire town. I really thought when you said you were afraid of running into them again. I sometimes look at their social media and they never change. Fuck. <laughs> just don't do that. Just forget about them. They think being violent is something to be proud of. Yeah. I mean, most people wouldn't gloat about it. But they, they, they kind of do. They take pleasure in domination and being superior. And the thing is, they don't, they don't care about uplifting you. They care about being better than you. <clears throat> Which I could somewhat excuse. If, they're like, if it's just like a, a friendly competition where they're just doing their thing, right? It's not, not a problem. I guess. Even at my age... I still have a bit of fear of running into them again. is isn't as bad anymore. I think a few of them moved away, but the fear never completely left. I hope by my age, not anyone who sees me will at least be less vindictive and try not to actively ruin my life. Yeah. But, I mean, it's, it's good for them, right? You get screwed. And uh, they win even more. Literally me, desperately looking for a part-time judge. Yep, don't want to tell the story right now, but big part of it. I mean, this is kind of, you know, yeah, that's interesting because, like, this should not happen. I mean, this is not even something society has to do. You just, you see, like, some, some kid getting bullied. It's like, okay, I'm bullied, boom, you're done. That's it. Of course, this is a little bit naive because even the teachers might be bullies or, or they just don't care or whatever. Being like, oh, this is the way. Yeah. Yep, all the bullying prevented me from studying and I ended up as a neat <laughs> today. Damn, man. The thing is, I mean, you can say like, oh yeah, fight back. And that, I guess, would be the the common answer. But you're being naive. If someone is picking a fight with you, in most cases, just look at nature. Who, who's who's picking the fight? When a lion picks a fight, lion tend to pick a fight with those who they can beat. Now, that doesn't necessarily mean that they can beat in all regards, right? I mean, what usually happens in school, that's the cliche. That the, the bully is strong and beats up the nerd, right? <clears throat> and that's what happens, right? The nerd will win in life, most likely, if they're not fucked in the head by them. But the bully's strong now. And maybe that's all they will need to win in life. They gotta be a manager. <laughs> okay. Oh, this guy had a different one. 
ADHD. Yep. I was homeschooled in a small town for most of my elementary school. Got bullied. Had braces. Oh, this is actually interesting. I was homeschooled in a small town for, for most of elementary school and went to a small conservative church. Then in my seventh grade year, we moved in a big city. Known for some snobbery. And looking back, I feel like I was uh, three, four years behind normal with psych psychosocial development. I was immediately the weird kid and ostracized. Yeah. That's not great. Damn, man. There are those who really make self-taught work. I don't know. Even if you're just coming in on the outside there, that's already uh, not a great situation. Unless you come in as a big winner. You're going to be picked on. Who else likes to put themselves down? Apparently a lot of neat. We saw that. I'm tired of gaslighting myself and saying stuff like, oh, it will be all right. Just have a confidence in yourself. That's just so, so bad. I, I really wish people stopped saying that. But there's just money in it. There are so many hope drifters out there. And the, the reality is that many of them are psychologists. Not that I know personally. I just saw online. Damn, man. It's all mindset, baby. <sighs> How does that just selling you a bullshit life? I mean, no one wants to hear the reality that, I mean, you're probably gonna, never going to make it out. And you, you can try, and who knows. I mean, I don't know your situation, but, I mean, assuming you, you're watching this from a third world country, then, yeah. I mean, you, you certainly should do all you can, right? And in a way, it might be better just to be completely delusional. Because, like, why does well go, right? If that works for you. I mean, in a way, it worked for a lot of people in humanity. But apparently, those who have seen seen the truth, I guess it might not work for you. And then, then you need a different solution. I mean, that that's why, like, religion and like, psychology just doesn't actually work if if the purpose is just to gaslight you into like oh yeah it's 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 okay it's like the things you saw with your own two eyes not not real right <laughs> after numerous of failed attempts at studying for a better future and not being able to hold jobs i confirm that a genuine retard <laughs> them will never succeed <laughs> yeah so i uh, like to put themselves down uh. I'm stupid and always was. I'm just seeing it. I think I'm pro at that, but I've been pro since I was little. Might as well be a winner. The world's worst self-esteem. I think is. Didn't you learn from someone else? I, that's what I would be thinking. Yeah, I, I'm with this this one. Select stock. No, putting yourself down is totally pointless. I agree. Let's uh, take your stance on your own lack of talent. I don't think you can be objective about yourself. Just go in the way you want. Also, at the at the start, you always feel dumb. Real dumb. I mean, you might need months or possibly years to realize that, like, oh yeah, it took took months and years to get there. Because, especially if you go online, then I think this is a pretty bad scenario these days, is that people say like, oh yeah, I learned a language in like, well, all the weekend, or like one week. And that's not really reality. Even if you look at the official guidelines, you, you might see like, oh, it takes like 650 hours to learn an easy language. But even that is not realistic. I mean, possibly to a conversational level, but, I mean, in order to learn it well, it takes a long time. I mean, just look at the reality that those who learn English as a second language might never pick it up perfectly. Even those who speak English as their native language could struggle with it. Their own damn language. Because you look at the political speeches and and it's like, second or third grade level right now because people are dumb that's it now my point was not to discourage you but just to emphasize that it takes time right 
So you might be like, oh, map is pointless or like it, it's hopeless. I, it, no, no way. No way I can do it. Yeah. Don't don't do it like like in one go. Just, just do a little bit of map one day and I keep doing it for like three years. Right. And uh, you might surprise yourself. Same for me. I try to be better, but I failed. I think I have low IQ. It prevents me from succeeding. Yeah. Not great. This is not useful. Yeah, this guy's right. So, this is why, in a way, coping kind of helps. It's like, you don't know. Who knows? You know? These, these guys are so sure that they are screwed. And they might be right. But I, I think it's hard to be objective. Or at least, you might now realize that the person who is... Who is it easy for? May have already put in years. And in a way, you might be the kid who's like... Who... You went into school, and that was the first time you learned to read and do math. And other kids may have spent years, many years, you know, being educated by their parents. Yet you go there, and you feel like a total dumbass. When you go to college, you might realize that, that some people already know more than the entire course, than the entire thing. Yeah, They're just there for the degree, right? Maybe they picked it up when they were teenagers or went back with a degree, right? And you think like, oh my god, this is terrible. I'm, I'm the dumbest idiot here. Maybe not the dumbest one, but like, still. It's a different field. So it's important to have perspective. And it's no use to put yourself down. Okay, last one. Just start your own business. Anyone ever been told this? I, it's honestly so damn annoying. And just another example of normies trying to blame us for our own situation. I'm not sure it's blame, but like last hope. Because you see people like doing YouTube videos and uh, and doing TikToks and uh, trying to start businesses. Not out of a position of strength, but as a position of desperation. Because like, okay, I got some time. Like, um, or, or like you're trying to diversify because like you see the world where the where the world is going you know like okay jobs are not exactly secure and who knows what's gonna happen so not necessarily a position of strength but like fear and desperation or maybe just your last last bastion of hope but businesses are not exactly easy i mean it's not exactly a surprise that most of the businesses kind of rise from like the uh, San Francisco area, from the best schools and uh, with connections. <laughs> I know business loan, I think. Yeah, I'm, I don't know. I mean, it, it could work out. Vast majority of new businesses fail within a year simply because they aren't needed. Yeah, that's a good point. You, you would be getting to the ocean. And everyone just competing super hard. The basic way to start a business is to notice some need that goes unfulfilled. I don't recall it ever happening to me. The markets are just so oversaturated. Well, I'm not gonna discourage anyone, but like, yeah, you definitely need an idea. Some some idea. It doesn't even have to be new. It actually shouldn't be new. Just just take a thing, do it better. Or maybe do it cheap. In some way, it needs to be better. It can be just like straight up copy paste. And uh, ideally, you want to be doing B two B, business to business, and like make contact with the business. Say like, oh yeah, I got the thing. I'm doing it. It's like, oh, you didn't want to buy it? Like, yeah, yeah. Uh, but I guess it depends. I can argue that this is a business. Just just doing a YouTube video. It's just too long. I want to do do a deep dive, and I guess I'm living up to it. Well, and then you fail, and you can. Fire yeah, that's a bit pessimistic here. So it's important to make a distinction between, like, realistic is not about pessimism, right? But also optimists are like, oh, yeah, I think this is going to work out. No, no matter. It's like, okay, that, that's fine. But, like, that could be a little bit diluted. But also pessimism is not very useful either. Still, I would argue that optimism is still kind of better. Like, you want to be looking at ways to how to solve the problems instead of just looking at the problems. Because then you have people just enumerating all the problems. And I guess that could be useful, but like, 
I mean, it would be more useful to just sew one, if you can. I'm not saying you can't. Oh, uh, you can't. Necessarily. I'm just saying that if you can solve one, that would be so much better than just enumerating all of them. Yeah, I heard that one too. People that say that are fucking stupid and entitled. Not everyone has a rich mommy and daddy. You might not need that, but I mean, it is certainly not the the reality in our world. That it's like, oh yeah, man, uh, the life is so hard. Like, uh, I guess I'm just gonna start a business as a need. It's gonna be so good. The world is chaotic, weird place, so I wouldn't be shocked if it worked out, yeah. I mean, it could work out, just... That is genuinely terrible advice to say to an eat. <laughs> I mean, that's one of the hardest things you can do, right? If you had the funding, yeah, that's not just funding. Okay. So the reality is that there's only gonna be more needs, and uh, needs are not exactly loving it. I mean, you can enjoy it, I guess, if you have the money. Uh, then at the point, you're retired, so that's great. But, yeah. I guess it's not a problem for us, because uh, we're all gonna get rich, boys. So, 